So, right hand, we make it into a fist, representing power. Left hand, fingers together, representing friendship. Tucking in the thumb, representing humility. And fist goes into the palm, and we say, welcome. Beautiful. All right. Standing in the Wuji position, feet shoulder, hip distance apart, slight bend in the knees, tuck in the tailbone, head is lifted by the silk thread, legs in kind of an arch shape, all right? Uh, good posture. We want to make sure we're standing up straight, not only from this direction, but also make sure you're standing straight in this direction, that you're not putting your head or body forward, keeping the body straight, okay? Work on that. Walls, really good place to check those out. Heels against the wall, bottom against the wall, shoulders, and then head against the wall. Make sure this is an easy way for you to stand, that you're not trying to do this. All right, if you have trouble getting the head against the wall, try and tuck the chin in, like we're gonna do in our first warm up exercise. All right? All right, so from the Wuji position, we're gonna do deep breathing, deep belly breathing. Inhale the hands up. And exhale, float the hands down. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Yeah. Push the hands in front of us next. Inhale to the heart. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Deep belly breath in, long, slow breath out. Inhale to the heart, exhale, relax the hands down. One more time to the front, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Arms over the head next, inhale to the heart. Be kind to your shoulders. Exhale, hands towards the ceiling. Inhale and exhale. Again, big, deep belly breath in. Long, slow breath out. Y'all go, Cardinals. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Arms to the side. Inhale to the heart. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Deep belly breath in. Long, slow breath out, fingertips up, feel the stretch in the arms. Inhale and exhale. One more time, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Beautiful. Arms in the diagonals, inhale to the heart. Left up, right down, exhale. Inhale to the heart, then right up, left down, keeping the upper body straight. Good job. Inhale to the heart and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Keep the upper body nice and straight. Inhale to the heart. Nice and slow. Exhale. Inhale. Good job. And exhale. Keep that upper body nice and straight. Inhale. Back to the heart. Exhale. Relax the hands down. We're going to flap the arms like bird wings. Big, deep belly breath in. Be kind to your shoulders. And then long, slow breath out. Inhale, filling the lungs with air. And exhale. 
One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Finish up with gathering chi. Big, deep belly breath in. And long, slow breath out. Inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Good job. Any questions about that? You've been breathing for a little while, right? Uh, quick note about the shoulder. Much better to keep your posture when we're doing the diagonals. If you can't get your arm up all the way, don't do this to get your arm up all the way. I'd rather see you do this, where you can only get the arm up so high. Um, but you keep the body straight. Don't go higher by leaning out to the side. That's going to catch up with you in a bad way someday. Okay? Um, one thing I forgot to tell you about is the walk coming up October 7th. It's just like a month and a week away. Um, so it's being held here at Logan College. It's a fundraiser. It's a great family event. Bring kids, bring grandkids, um, all that stuff. It's a lot of fun. Um, and usually the weather in October has been perfect for it. So, and it's a short walk. It's a, is it a quarter mile or half mile track? Quarter mile? Yeah, yeah, it's real short. And you actually, if you got halfway and you felt like you couldn't make it, you can walk across the infield or there'll be somebody there that'll help you. Um, anyway, it's October 7th. Uh, it's the major uh, fundraising event for all of you folks. The other ones are kind of aimed at businesses for sponsorship. This one is aimed at you folks and to help support programs like this. You can see how well that does, that's done, right? Um, so uh, if you want to join the Tai Chi team, um, feel free to, or every exercise group has a, has a team, feel free to join one of those or start your own if you want, okay? Yeah, you never know, right? Okay, warm-up exercise. This is that chin tuck that I was talking about. So we start in the Wuji position. We float the hands up in the air, hands to the chest, tucking in the chin, looking straight ahead. Hands come out, chin gently floats up, and then we sink the chin to the chest without leaning forward. Again, floating the hands up in the air, hands to the chest, tucking in the chin, looking straight ahead. Hands come out, chin gently floats up, and sink the chin down to the chest. We're not leaning forward, just moving the neck. One more time, lifting the hands up, floating the hands up. Hands to the chest, tucking in the chin, looking straight ahead. Excellent. Hands come out, chin gently floats up, and sink the chin down to the chest. Beautiful. That's our first neck exercise. Next neck exercise, we're going to look side to side. Keep your shoulders square to the front, so I'm just turning my neck, right shoulder, left shoulder, all right? Prayer hand position, Tai Chi ball, right hands on top. Watch the left hand going over the left shoulder, looking left, pushing down right. And come back to center, come back to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top. Watch the right hand going over the right shoulder, looking right, push down on the left hand. And come back to center, back to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, right hand on top, left hand, left shoulder, looking left, pushing down right. And come back to center, back to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand on top, right hand, right shoulder, looking right, pushing down left. Feel that nice stretch in the neck. And come back to center. Beautiful. One more time. Tai Chi ball, right hand on top. Left hand, left shoulder, looking left, pushing down right. Come back to center. Come back to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top. Right hand, right shoulder, looking right, pushing down left. Look right, push down left. And. 
Come back to center, come back to prayer hands, and relax the hands down. Let's take a short break. I want everybody to stay hydrated. It's really important. This is probably one of the hottest days of the year. Today or tomorrow will be. So get yourself a drink of water. Stay hydrated, all right? Um, breathing with that. Um, so in general, when you breathe, um, if the hands are moving in, um, you um, breathe in. If the hands are moving out, you breathe out. Sure. Pardon me? You want me to open that for you? Yes, please. Sure. Thank you. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I saw a water bottle in your hand. I would have brought you a bottle of water. I apologize. That was rude of me. Um, that's not the way my daddy raised me. Um, the uh, Stay hydrated. Um, don't be like my mother. My mother used to take an eight-ounce glass of water and have a couple sips and go, see, I'm hydrated. It's like, no, Mom, you got to have 64 ounces of water a day. And she would take a couple more sips, but there'd still be more than half of a glass. So uh, we ended up, and it, it's actually a good idea, determine how much water you need to drink. They've changed that over the past year, but um, at that time it was 64 ounces of water. So we went to the dollar store, got a pitcher of water, and drew a big blue line around 64 ounces. Um, and then I said, your goal, fill up this pitcher every night and try and drink the pitcher dry. And the first couple of nights it was uh, kind of slow, but she started hydrating better, more and better, okay? So um, that works if you need to. Don't worry about the chair, chair dries out. Don't, don't worry about the chair. Thanks for your help, Bill. We'll, we'll set the chair aside, it'll dry out, it'll all be good. All right, it's just water. We don't even cry over spilled milk, much less spilled water, so. <laughs> yes, there you go, good point. Good point, I like that. All right, let's do shoulder exercises next, all right? Wuji position, shoulders back, up, forward, and down without leaning forward. Shoulders back, up, forward without leaning forward and down. Make sure you're looking straight in front of you. Shoulders back, up, forward, and down. One more time, shoulders back, up. Now as we come forward, look straight ahead, just moving the shoulders, not leaning forward, and down. Beautiful. So on that one, you wanna be really careful that you don't start bending the body forward. Remember that straight posture that I talked about. So you're bringing the shoulders forward, but you're keeping that, that posture. You want to be not used to leaning that way. Uh, but you will. You'll give it some time. Okay. So that's why you want to work on that chin tuck. So you're able to get your feet, rear end, and shoulders against the wall. That's good. So instead of doing this with your head, do this with the head, do that chin tuck and stretch out these muscles back here. No, eventually it will. You you didn't get to the head forward, so tuck the chin in. There you go. There you go. No, you got two inches, inch and a half maybe there. So so this brings up a good point though. Um, you, you didn't get the head forward posture overnight. You're not gonna fix it overnight either. You just keep working at it a little bit uh, each time. Lay on your back on a flat surface and try and put the neck down also. Uh, I could demonstrate it on a floor, but then we'd spend the whole time getting up from the floor. We don't want that either. That's why walls make such a great, uh, great uh, example. Uh, yes, yes. And see, and we're trying to stop that from happening. Because think of, okay, how much does a human head weigh? Uh, yeah, about 10, 11 pounds. Average human head weighs 10 or 11 pounds. So think of taking a 10 pound bowling ball and holding it out over your body 
not holding it here, but holding it out here, and how hard that is to hold, right? You're making your whole body do that when you lean forward like that. You're taking that 10 pound bowling ball and pulling it forward. It's said that it puts about 60 pounds on your neck and causes problems with the neck. They're actually finding a lot of kids now are having problems with their neck. Any guess why? No, phone. Doing this with the phone. We gotta teach them if you're gonna be on the phone to do this when you text, not this. Yes, yep. Yeah, that chin tuck that we do, that you pull the chin back like that. Then you're cheating. <laughs> well, I can stand here and touch my head if I want to. And my feet are a lot further than six inches out, right? But we want to work on our posture, so we try and do this. So, but just gradually try this. You don't have, it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. It can happen a month or two months from now, but you gradually open up these muscles here in the back and it keeps you nice and straight. You'll be amazed at how much energy you save when you're using the body properly. Okay. Um, by the way, you asked me a question and we got stuck on water. Um, breathing for the neck exercise is basically we inhale to prayer our hands and then we exhale as we come out and inhale as we come back in and exhale as we come out and inhale as we come back in. That's generally the breathing. However, I will tell you with Tai Chi, focus on the physical movements first. Um, some of you are, are still learning the physical movements. Some people can move to the breathing, but learn the physical movements first and then add the breathing onto it. If you try and learn, learn two of those at once, it gets really confusing and it, 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 just, it doesn't go really well because um, you're trying to do too many things at once. So learn the physical movements first, then learn the breathing, okay? Everything is step by step, okay? Yes, breathing is important. <laughs> yes, definitely breathing is important. Well, some people have asked me, why do you start out each, each exercise with breathing? Well, if you think about it, how long can you last without food? You can last like over 30 days, I think is the record, without any nutrition, any food. Uh, how long can you last without water? I think about 11 days in proper, like today you wouldn't last long, um, but in proper environmental conditions, 11 days you can go without water. How long can you go without breathing? Yeah, two minutes is about it. There's some deep sea divers that can go like six minutes without breathing. But, you, I mean, that, that's crazy. Um, so that's why we're teaching you to breathe. It's one of the fundamental things we do. And we actually get it wrong when we do it. So that's why I start each class with the breathing. Okay. It's part of that whole mindfulness thing. Okay. All right. So. Shoulder exercise, let's go backwards now. So shoulders forward without leaning forward, up, back, and down. Shoulders forward, up, back, and down. One more time, shoulders forward, up, back, and down. Good posture, gathering chi, reaching for infinity. Imagine someone's pulling on your wrist. So gently reaching out, reaching up, expanding and opening the body. And relax the hands down the center line. Two more times, gently reaching out, reaching up, beautiful stretch. And exhale, relax the hands down. Beautiful, one more time, gently reaching out, reaching up, beautiful stretch. Exhale, relax the hands down. Beautiful. All right, touching heaven and earth. We're lifting the head by the silk thread, opening, expanding the spine. Prayer hand position. Left hand up, right hand down, stretching the spine. And come back to center. Keep looking straight ahead. Keep the head level. Right hand up, left hand down, stretching the head. And back to center. Left hand up, right hand down, gently stretching the head. And back to center, 
right hand up, left hand down, gently stretching the spine and back to center. Beautiful. One more time. Left hand up, right hand down, stretching the head, float the head towards the ceiling, come back to center, keep that chin level. Right hand up, left hand down, again, stretching that head. Look straight ahead. Come back to center and relax the hands down. Um, on that exercise, be careful. Remember I was talking about it when we we're breathing that you don't want to be doing this. You want to be doing this. Same way there as you bring the hand up, don't lean to the side. Some people lean the head to the side. Some people will look to the side also. You keep looking straight ahead. Keep the chin level so you're not doing this or looking up. But you keep the chin level and pull out the head. Okay? Imagine that string up um, when we wear a ball cap, the little bean at the top of the hat is right over the crown of our head. That's where you want to feel like the string is attached because this is right above my spinal cord, right? So this is where you want to feel like the string is attached, not up here, because when that pulls up, you look up. When I pull from here, I'm lifting the whole head up, okay? That also helps with that head forward posture. <laughs> Well, then you're just a puppet, huh? <laughs> All right. Um, actually, that, that is a really good exercise, especially for people with Parkinson's. Because, again, when we have Parkinson's disease, our core starts to get weak and we start to lean forward. Um, and you want to counteract that. You want to quit doing that. But it's hard to do. And so we work on lifting the head by the silk thread. That straightens our body out. We tuck in the chin a little bit, and that helps with our posture also. But again, it's something that we work on. Think about it every day. Not just when you're in Tai Chi class. That will help you. Uh, but if you really want to get better at it, try and think, you know, you'll be doing something during the day and go, oh, I need to sit up straight. Yeah, I need to lift my head by that silk thread. And you constantly think about lifting your head by the silk thread, and that constantly starts to help your posture. Okay? Um, one other word about posture, spouses are really good help with this, or care partners are really good help with this, uh, because they can see when you're leaning before you're leaning. And so um, have them gently, gently, not naggingly, but gently remind you to straighten your posture up. We used to do this with our mom, my mother all the time used to tell her mom, your, your mom would start leaning when she got tired, so we would tell her to sit back up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. What we used to do with my mother, because we never want to embarrass mom in a group of people. My mom was very social. Um, but so we would say, if it was just us, we'd say, mom, you need to straighten up. But uh, that's a good good point. Um, but during like a dinner or something like that, we would tap the ring against the table or a chair or something like that. Do that. And that was a, a signal to my mom, you're starting to lean. So mom would straighten back up. Nobody knew it but mom, my sister, me, and my brother. We're the only persons that knew it. So that was a nice way to do it. So maybe work on uh, a signal like that when you're out, although nobody would know what PC meant. Politically correct, right? <laughs> All right. And we know that none of us here are politically correct, right? <laughs> Especially after last night's debate. All right. Prayer hand position. Tai Chi ball. Left hand is on top. Try to not move the hips. Move the upper body. Turning the upper body to the left. Ball comes over, right hand's on top, right hand is on top, gently sweep to the right. Turn the ball over, left hand is on top, gently turn to the left, try to not turn the hips, just turn the upper body, feel the stretch in the lower back. Turning the ball over, right hand is on top, gently turn to the right. This is going to help your core get stronger. Turning the ball over, left hand is on top, gently turn to the left. And then turn the ball over, right hand is on top, and gently turn to the right. We turn the ball over, we come back to center, relax the hands down. Beautiful. 
Uh, leg strengthening exercise. We're keeping the knee bent, keeping the body straight. Okay, use your chair if you need to. Weight shift to the left, bend in the left knee, right foot, cat stance. All your weight stays left. Tap right toe to the front. Keep the weight left. Keep plenty of space between your feet. And back to cat stance. Make sure you have plenty of space between the feet. Tap right toe to the side, keeping all the weight left. And return to cat stance. And then finish with the right toe behind us. Keep plenty of space between your feet. Don't step on a balance beam. Don't make me say your name. Cat stance. And back to Wu Ji. Beautiful. Other side, weight shifts right. Bend in the right knee, body stays straight. Left foot, cat stance. Keep that upper body straight. Make sure you're not leaning forward. Tap left foot to the front, empty. And back to cat stance. Tap left foot to the side, empty, keeping all the weight right. Don't lean to the right. Stay nice and straight. Cat stance. And left toe behind us. All the weight stays right. Plenty of space between the feet. Good job. And cat stance. And Simon says, return to neutral. Beautiful. Good job. Feel that work the legs? Wouldn't that be fun to do on a day like today out in the heat on a blacktop parking lot? What could go wrong there? All right. Um, let's have another drink of water. Uh, let's sit down. Let's do a couple of the seated exercises. You guys asked some really good questions. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, um, <laughs> you can tell people are paying attention when they ask by the questions that they ask. Um, I was working on training a group of instructors, and I've been doing it for four hours, um, uh, three hours maybe. Um, and we're pretty much to the end of the day, and one of the instructors says, so what is an empty stance? And I was like, oh my God, you should know that. So I explained it to her, but it's like, it, it's obvious she hadn't been paying attention. If she, at, at that point, as an instructor, you should know what an empty stance is. I figure probably half of you, if not more of you, know what the empty stance is. So, but you guys are asking awesome questions, so keep it up, okay? Doing the hip exercise, don't forget, we're sit up on the edge of our chair, feet flat on the floor, knee is directly above the heel. Roll forward on the pelvis, head is lifted by the silk thread. This gives me good straight body posture, so I'm not sitting like this or sitting like this, but I keep that back nice and straight. Practice sitting like this. Be PC about it, right? <laughs> so when you're sitting, um, make sure you try to sit with good posture. Now, occasionally you're, you're going to get tired and slumped to the side. That's okay. Um, but practice sitting like this over and over again. It makes a huge difference. All right. I've noticed with my Parkinson's friends, whatever posture they use when they are sitting, it tends to be the same posture they use when they stand. So make sure your sitting posture is good. Okay. All right. Hip exercise. Let's turn to the right hand side of the chair. We're going to spread out that left leg. The knee is going to stay over the heel, so I'm not doing this or this or this or this. All right? Prayer hand position. We're just going to add the hands, and you guys have been doing so well. Push on that right wall, imaginary right wall, and open up that left leg simultaneously. And come back to center. Keep the knee above the ankle, all right? Push against the right wall. Open up the left leg. Try and keep the knee directly above the heel and come back to center. So pause one second. When your leg's out here, that is not proper. That is proper. And just moving your leg from here to here, you're going to feel more of a stretch on the inside of the leg, okay? 
So practice keeping the legs straight, exactly. Prayer hand position, push against the imaginary right wall, open up left leg. Good job, you guys are awesome. Come back to center, relax the hands down. Good job, turn to the left hand side of the chair. Same thing, other side, prayer hand position, push against the imaginary left wall, open up the right leg, keep the knee above the heel. And come back to center. Again, push against the imaginary left wall, open up the right leg, and back to center. One more time, push against that left wall, open up the right leg, feel that stretch, and come back to center. Relax the hands down, turn back to the front, shake those legs loose. Good job. All right. I'm sorry? To which side? Both sides? Last one. So if we turn to the left hand side of the chair, knees are together, hands start in prayer hands, and then we push against the imaginary left wall, and then we open up the right leg. And then we come back to center, hands back to center. So what we're doing here, this is working my hip as I do this. This is working the brain because one side of my brain is saying, go to the left, push to the left, but open up the right leg simultaneously. So that's helping work the brain, okay? This works the hip, combining those two works the brain, okay? Sure, no problem. All right, second hip exercise, two motions with the leg. We're going to lift the leg up and push the leg down. We're gonna keep our back and body nice and straight. So make sure that you're not lifting up your leg by leaning back or crunching. Um, you wanna keep the back straight and lifting the leg, all right? Imagine the same time your leg is being lifted, the knee is being lifted, that you're lifting the head simultaneously. That will help keep your back straight. Simultaneous, or it's not simultaneously, similar. As you push down on the foot, you're gonna to wanna to lean over to try and get more leverage. Um, but you want to stay nice and straight. This is going to work your core. Okay. All right. For our hand position, actually, hands down to the side. I'm sorry. Lift the left leg up, knee up, hands back, body straight, big smile. And relax. And the hands in front, push down on the left foot, hard as you can. Push, 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 and relax. Lift the left leg up, hands behind us and relax and then hands in front of us and push down on the left foot try to push your foot through the floor push 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 and relax one more time lift the left leg up hands behind us back is straight hands come down float down then up in front of us and push down on the left foot hard as you can and relax beautiful shift to the other side Pick up the right leg, hands behind us, body and back are straight, and relax, hands in front of us, push down on the right foot, hard as you can, keep your back straight, and relax. Lift the right leg up, hands behind us, and relax, hands in front of us, push down on the right foot, hard as you can, push, 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 and relax. One more time, lift the right leg up, hands behind us, hold this for a half an hour. Just kidding, just seeing if you were listening. And then hands in front of us and push down on the right foot, hard as you can, push, 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 and relax. Beautiful, that helps build bone strength, all right? Does a lot of things actually, your hip, your knee, core, works on all of them. All right, any questions about that? It is hard to do. No, you actually create your own resistance. Um, uh, yes, but you can tell if somebody's doing it right by watching their hips. No, it doesn't move very far, but you see when somebody's pushing down, like if you watch my hips when I push down, see my hips shift a little bit? 
I'm pushing, I'm not pushing. See my hips shift just a little bit. That's what you look for as an instructor, okay? Um, do you remember, it was back, I believe it was late 60s, early 70s, they had isometric exercises. I think Jack LaLanne was part of that also, where you imagine that you're lifting weight. It's kind of the same principle. The Chinese have been doing that for many, many years. So like when we're gathering chi, you don't just go, yeah, we're gonna gather chi, right, yeah. Um, but you actually imagine that you're like lifting weights up over your head. And then you imagine like, um, like imagine you're in a lake and you're trying to push a beach ball underwater and it's giving you that resistance. So you have, you're, you're feeling that weight in all different directions. That's a, one of the key principles of Tai Chi. Um, and it helps slow you down, but it helps build your arms, build your legs when you do that also. And really that's the isometric exercise. Yeah. Dr. Lam used to say, imagine you're in a thick pool of water when you're doing that. So you're, you're bringing your hands up through that thick pool of water and then bringing your hands down in that thick pool of water. But you do it with all your exercises. And I said, oh, thick pool of water, that's called humidity in St. Louis. <laughs> Especially the last few days, it's been crazy humid. <laughs> yeah. So. But you know, when you're doing something, when you're pushing your hands out, you imagine you're pushing something away from you and you're pulling something to you. You're pushing something over the head and you don't just let the arm drop, but you're like, you push something down um, and it builds up your muscles while you're doing it, right? Okay. Heel kick, four motions with the leg. Lift the leg up, kick the leg out, lift the leg back up, float the foot to the ground. Now again, this is one where you don't get here and go, just drop the foot, but push the foot to the ground. Imagine your own resistance, okay? All right, punching out the opposite hand, back stays straight, body stays straight, okay? Hands loosely gripped at the belt line, pick up the left leg, heel kick left, punch out right fist. Pick up the left leg and float the foot to the ground. Make sure you're sitting up nice and straight and tall. Pick up the right leg, heel kick right, punch out the left fist. Pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. Good job. Pick up the left leg, heel kick left, punch out right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, heel kick right, punch out left fist, sorry. Left side, opposite side and come back to center. One more time, pick up the left leg, heel kick left, punch out right, opposite hand, there you go. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground, pick up the right leg, heel kick right, punch out left fist, and then pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. Beautiful, shake those legs loose. All right, toe kick, make sure you're sitting up nice and straight and tall. P be PC about it, right? <laughs> All right. It's hard to sit this way, isn't it? It really works the core. Uh, and so this is something that you can do to help yourself at home um, while you're watching TV, while you're watching the Cardinals lose again. Um, you can be sitting in your chair and just practice sitting up straight, just between innings when you're not doing anything anyway. You know, there's just commercials on TV. Practice sitting up straight for... <laughs> yeah, sometimes on that, those recliners have the seat that's back and trying to push you back into the chair. But it, yeah, yep. But it's not good for you to do that. It's, it's good to work on um, doing this can still work on your core. And you'll be amazed at how much stronger you get. When I did this, I was in my mid-40s when I started doing Tai Chi, and I couldn't sit this way for very long at all. I can now... 20 years later, sit this way for a long period of time. And actually, and I used this sitting up nice and straight and tall to help me get stronger after my surgery. That's one thing that I did. Okay. Yes. It, it does. It does help. And if you get tired, um, 
Now, these are straight back chairs, so they work really well for this. You stick your booty all the way, it's hard to do with a wireless mic on, um, stick your booty all the way in the chair and then use the back of the chair and I'm still sitting up nice and straight and tall. Uh, so just you know, check your, your chair. Some chairs at home, the back leans back. Um, so you wanna stay nice and straight, but this is helpful also. But I'm using a little bit of the back of the chair, so when you sit up on the end, now you're forcing your muscles to do all of the work. And that makes a difference, but it makes a big difference that it, that's very helpful for you, okay? And again, you didn't lose that overnight. You're not gonna gain it back overnight. Just do it little by little, okay? All right, toe kick. Same thing we just did, point the toe forward now. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out left fist. Pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. Good job. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out left fist. Pick up the right leg, the foot should still be in the air. Float the foot to the ground. Beautiful, one more time. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out right. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out left. Come back with that right foot, let it hover there for a minute, then float it to the ground. Shake your legs loose, good job. All right, let's do our ankle exercise. Get yourself a drink of water real fast. Um, and then let's stand and do our ankle exercises, all right? Just trying to make sure you stay hydrated today. All right. Time flies with you folks, I tell you what. By the way, yesterday was my mother's, she would have been 90 years old, it was her birthday. Um, it was because of my mother that I'm teaching Tai Chi. It's because of my mother and her Parkinson's disease. Um, it was, it made sense to me. I knew what Tai Chi was, but I had never done it. It just made sense to me that it would help someone with Parkinson's disease. So I took my mom to my first Tai Chi class and her first Tai Chi class, and I enjoyed it so much. I felt, again, mid-40s. I had better balance. Um, I slept better at night. Uh, so I immediately started feeling the results, and Mom and I did Tai Chi together every week, first as students, then as instructor and student, for the rest of her life. So, um, so it was her birthday. So that's the reason I'm here, okay? So you can cuss her out if you want. <laughs> all right, ankle exercise, all right? Make sure you use the chair. Um, yep. Yeah, um, Push that chair in, uh, her chair in just a little bit. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Thank you. All right, weight shift to the right. Left foot, touch heel and toe. Heel, toe, try to not move the leg, move the ankle, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, and toe. Weight shift to the left. Right foot, heel, and toe. Heel, and toe. Flex the ankle. Heel, toe. Don't move the leg, move the ankle. Heel, toe, heel, and toe. Weight shift back to the right. Second ankle exercise. Left foot, touch little toe, then big toe. Outside, then inside. Little toe and big toe. Weight shift to the left, bend in the left knee, right foot, little toe, big toe, outside, inside, little toe and big toe. And back to center. Beautiful. Ooh. All right, now yeah, we're gonna call it. It's a hot day. I won't push you any more exercise, all right? Um, any questions on anything that we did? You gotta be careful asking that around you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, no questions are good. 
All right, let's do our three cool down. We should probably do more. I probably should have started with cool down, but that's all right. Lightly punch or slap the legs. Next, we'll tighten up all the muscles in the body and then relax. Tighten up the muscles and relax. Keep your good posture. Tighten up the muscles and then relax. And finish with gathering chi. Big deep belly breath in. Long, slow breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Right hand fist power, left hand, fingers together, friendship, tucking the thumb, humility. Great job today. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 